You just heard the sound of Danny Ramlin and Mark Wilkinson, a track we made a few years ago called Night and Day, uh, available still, a great tune. We're really pleased with that one. Um, I'd like to welcome the man, the legend, Danny Ramlin to Mark Wilkinson Straight Talking. How are you, Dan? I'm good. Pleasure to be here, Mark. How thank are you? you yes, I'm really good, mate. I'm really good. Thank you. So um, let's start with a bit of music. Uh, let's talk, talk about music. What's your favourite tune and why? Well, it's really hard to pinpoint one particular track. Um, over 35 years I've spent in music as a professional DJ. Um, so, but the, the one that really, really uh, stands out, they all stand out. I could list hundreds of uh, tunes, but this one in particular was a major turning point for me in the development of my career, where it all really did um, uh, begin and um, uh, and develop into a professional career. Before that, I was um, more of an apprentice and an aspiring DJ. I went to Ibiza. I heard DJ Alfredo play, and this was one of the tracks that really stood out that night on the open air dance floor in Amnesia. And um, it's a Frankie Knuckles production. God rest his soul. Um, let the music use you the night writers an anthem of that time and still in the present wow a timeless piece of music so uplifting um a, a really powerful um message in the song itself yeah beautiful mate yeah and it anchors you back to that that memory as well right i mean that memory of like it must have been was it 1987 or something i guess when yeah just standing there outdoors in amnesia when all the nightclubs in ibiza were open air uh, yeah. You know, wow, wow. In, what a... in the beginning, yes. I mean, this this particular track still evokes goosebumps. And <laughs> when I when I used to play it at Shum in the early days, I'd I'd, I'd be tingling, you know, along my arms and um, uh, down my spine and goosebumps. It's one of those tracks that, that evokes it invokes uh, uh, goosebumps. It's beautiful. brilliant. It's a beautiful choice, Dan. A beautiful choice. Yeah, I remember it so well. What a great record. And yeah, I mean, look, you know, a little bit about yourself. I mean. One of, one of the things that, that I'm so happy and grateful and honoured that you've chosen to do is to obviously write part of the forward to the book Life Remixed. Uh, I, you know, you've been, you've been a legend. You've been, well, you still are a legend, obviously, but you've been an influence in my life to, to a point where, you know, I stood on that dance floor at Shum when you were playing those songs. Uh, and I've got goosebumps thinking about those moments, and I'm anchored to those, you know, the sweaty nights in the in the you know the gym, you know, in London Bridge and and uh, in the fitness centre, and then obviously you know going to the park in Kensington, and all these great memories of of you playing these like wonderful tunes and uplifting a, a hundreds thousands of people at once by your choice of music and everything. I mean, you know, just tell us a little bit about that that those early days and that career and and how it ha happened, you know. I think it was one of the most um, um, marvellous points of um, uh, my own life path and for many others. It was a unique, groundbreaking um, time of togetherness, unity, hope, um, faith, uh, friendships were born uh, and uh, friendships that are have lasted a lifetime uh, marriages um, it was just a the spirit of togetherness where everybody came together as one and the power of the music um, through a very um, pretty kind of economically yeah. um, kind of there was it, it was quite there was quite a lot of disparity going on in the UK at that time in uh, the 80s the mid 80s to later 80s uh, but this the scene uh, flourished and um, spread like wildfire across the land and um, very very unique extraordinary time that brought meant so many people together and changed so many people's lives for the better a positive movement um, that um, is it, it, I think for many people is um, one of the most special things that they have experienced in a lifetime alongside um, childbirth or um, marriage and other you know kind of happy things in one's life but a, a remarkable period for youth culture and music you're right you're absolutely right yeah I mean I was blessed to be 18 years of age uh, in 1988, in the middle of uh, you know this explosion of music that you brought back from Ibiza, with with obviously Paul Oakenfold, Johnny Walker, Nicky Holloway, you know, fantastic guys, you know, still doing their thing and 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 doing doing great work in the world. And as you do, you still DJ, you still well, obviously you know not during this COVID period, but yeah. uh, or not as much as you would like to. <laughs> yes, exactly. uh, but uh, but we we're finding solutions. I mean, you played the other week at that uh, event up on the roof in Brixton, which was which was lovely. It was just so nice to be out and and hear some great 
great music again. So, uh, you know, keep up and that. be with other people. That's even, right. Even though it was uh, separated and yeah. people had to stay in their own uh, booth area, um, it, was, uh, it was still, uh, the fact was that, you know, there were 90 people there who were there to uh, socialise in a restricted way, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But it was well, just yeah. the spirit of being together with other people, listening and enjoying music is uh, one of the, um, uh, the greatest pleasures in life. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and I was blessed to be a DJ, full-time DJ for, for 20 years. Th many thanks to you and, and what you did and how you actually like, you know, got this scene going. Uh, I was a little kid listening to the Beatles when I was six and just going, I love music. And next thing you know, I'm 16, 17, 18, and I'm in the thick of, you know, learning how to beat match two records together and, and actually, uh, you know, bring joy to other people. You know, I found a way to, to use music and, uh, and bring joy to others. And it was, it was a beautiful moment. And it wouldn't have happened if, you know, obviously things happen through history, don't they? You know, Larry Levan, Frankie Knuckles, you know, yeah. this history of, of these great, you know, New York clubs and the music coming across. And then Alfredo in Ibiza, as you say that inspired you to to step up and, and and put on a night i mean how did that process work i mean because you all came back and you all you know you did you did shoom and and paul did um what did he do he did spectrum it, spectrum of heaven didn't yes. he yeah yes. so so you know i mean you all came back and you're all inspired separately just to go for it uh, yes, that was the uh, general feeling in Ibiza, but I wasn't a club promoter before um, that trip to Ibiza, so it was a complete revelation and um, a hugely inspiring and influential. The influences of Alfredo, um, the, the 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 general experience of it uh, gave us a, uh, a a benchmark to. Mm -hmm. um, come back to london and start our respected clubs and within a matter of weeks um it had become a movement but also i the other uh djs were very established where i was still um trying to break through and this guy this scene was uh it, it that was created we collectively created created the scene but um, it gave me the platform that I've been aspiring and my ambitions were unlocked and fulfilled to become a professional DJ and club promoter and play to an audience that uh, really appreciated the music I was playing and uh, the rapport with an audience um, really shone through at the uh, at Shoom uh, at that time because I was very animated. I was having the time of my life like everyone else was. <laughs> yeah. And my dream, my dream had come true. I'd fulfilled an ambition. Wow. And that was the power of it. And that was my core driver and driving um, our party in the scene, in the whole Acid House scene, mm. was bringing people together and the unity and all of those things combined. Um, and the the rising tide of happiness and optimism <laughs> out of a very very bleak landscape in some respects the north of england was particularly depressed um at that time mm. and also you know kind of uh, in the south as well working class kids were not getting the opportunities okay you can make an opportunity but it was a very very depressed time economically so this scene grew flourished and created this new industry and a wave of opportunities for people who therefore would not have had those opportunities without the scene and the music and what it collectively created that's absolutely right. I mean, I, I ended up traveling obviously all the way across the UK playing music in back to basics in Leeds and resident DJ at Ministry of Sound in London. And then I ended up in 65 countries all over the globe playing music, playing music, you know, generally other people's music, some of my own, but generally other people's music yeah. playing it and just watching people just, just celebrate. I mean, yeah. what a way you know for me it was 20 years i mean for you longer but for, for 20 years just what a way to live and 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 you know spread that love and that joy and that, that peace around it was just a wonderful time well exactly and we all need to dance um right now we're not able to dance unfortunately no. but it's a human need um it, it uh it really dancing releases positive endorphins we feel good we're in the spirit and in our flow and we're just in the dance itself and being on a dance floor whether that be a festival or a club or wherever it may be um it's a release of 
positive endorphins and that energy that flows between uh, the social interaction on a dance floor and the audience and the DJ participating in rapport together, yeah. conducting the music to, yeah. with the audience in flow. So this, you know, this is an essential um, well-being experience. Dance, that expression, music, that, ex that expression, that opportunity yeah. to express yourself through music is 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 wonderful. And and you know, as soon as we can fully embrace music again, uh, you know, in that in that live environment, I know there'd be so many people, you know, desperate to get out there again and actually like celebrate, including you and me, of course. Yeah, I was just going to say, know. I'm certainly one of those people. <laughs> and, but let's talk a bit about Radio One. Let's talk about the Love Groove Dance Party. I mean, what a, what an opportunity that was for you to be Saturday night main main stage on radio one from you know was it for a few years at seven till nine several PM? years yeah several years from seven yeah. till nine p.m wasn't it and the love groove dance party was just legendary people adored you for that well it was getting the um the nation ready for a party saturday night is a party night yes. and i mean the scene was booming at that time across the land um um, it was a, a marvellous experience and um, wouldn't have missed it for the world. But, um, you know, I'd climbed from um, an unknown on a pirate station, Kiss FM, yeah. Gordon Mack, the station controller, gave me my break on radio as an unknown. But he saw some talent there, as he did with all of the DJs who were part of Kiss FM, whether established or non-established at that time. And he nurtured us. And that was great. So I went from there, late night radio show at two in the morning till four. And then I'd uh, get the night bus home to where I lived in South London, I'd have a kip for an hour and then I'd get on the bus to work in the city where I was working in the city. So, yeah, it was quite a tough one, but I, I was so determined to break into radio. And from there, I went to Kiss when it became legal with a primetime Saturday night show and then on to uh, subsequently on to Radio One for several years, um, which was a great experience. It was very daunting when I joined the sta uh, station, of course, because I, I felt when I was uh, in on the London station at that time, I was mainly speaking to people in London, listeners in London. Mm. Now it had gone national and the audience had uh, gone into hundreds of thousands mm. um, <laughs> across the land. So, um, but uh, yeah, great experience. And after a few weeks, I got very comfortable and settled into the role um, uh, at the BBC. And um, yeah, I'm very, very pleased to have, um, have, 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 provided a soundtrack to the nation every saturday for all those years amazing what, what an experience to have by the way amazing i mean you know just, just just what you've told me in the last five minutes just blows my mind and and you know many people would just you know would have loved to have that opportunity but the things that sprung into my mind when you were talking about it was like the persistence that you that you showed to like you know be that creative person and go through that process and with your passion persistence and passion and the other thing you said there as well is moving outside of your comfort zone you know doing Absolutely. anything in, doing anything in life to move outside of your comfort zone i've done it myself the first time i played the main room of ministry of sound yes i was i was like <laughs> i was like frankie knuckles stood there and cj <laughs> mcintosh stood there and here's wilkie <laughs> you know? you've and, got to step up though and just get on get on and do it and it, it does test you it, I, I totally understand because I, th I also share that experience when i first played at ministry of sound although the dj booth was in up in the heavens that's but right. nevertheless you were playing in one of the greatest clubs in the world yeah. um, on that sound system. But I totally uh, understand yeah. how you were feeling because I have felt on, on occasion at Ministry of Sound and other clubs for that matter, uh, uh, the same feelings. Yes. But however, you step up, you plug the headphone uh, jack in and you're away yes. and then you're in your flow and you're having a great time. And time yeah. goes quick. But yeah, it's about stepping, as you say, stepping out of the comfort zone, yeah. very important, and subtle persistence. Yes, very, very I true. I think if you're too, too in other people's faces, um, you know, kind of, and it's relentless persistence, it can get a bit kind of uh, jarring to some people. But, um, you know, some people do like that. But I think, so, for per, I'm, I'm, this is personally speaking, I think mm. subtle persistence and belief and the resilience to uh, go uh, as far as you can through thick and thin and keep going with it because there's lots of setbacks, um, whatever level you are at, but it's about being persistent, committed, passionate and focused on the objective um, and that inner knowing that this is what I want to achieve and I'm going to achieve it.
Brilliant. Brilliant, mate. There's a, there's a message there. There's a message. There. Anyone who's listening to the deeper level of that, there's an absolute message there. And I've got to say as well, big shouts to Gordon Mack as well, who's now running My Soul Radio. And, uh, you know, fair play to Gordon. You know, he's, he's, he believes in his music and, he, and he, he's got it going. And My Soul, My Soul Radio is, is strong. I've been there with Brandon and Ricky and it's, it's great. So good on them. Good on them. So look, um, when we first met, that's a tricky one for me. I mean, I remember being, I remember being on dance floors to, you know, dancing to your records many, many times. But when we actually got to sort of meet and say hi, it might well have been when I was at ministry and you, you might have come and guested or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. But, but what I do know is, is that we've grown, you know, over the period of time of the last sort of 10, 20, 30 years even, you know, we've just grown and grown and grown this sort of like friendship and mutual respect of kind of understanding each other's journeys um and then of course i i remember distinctly uh when you did that huge party when you were going to step away from music for a while and you did the uh the party at Turmills with frankie knuckles and frankie played for three or four hours and then you played for four or five hours i seem to remember until the very very early morning <laughs> 10 hours i think but <laughs> was it <laughs> well i mean that's a marathon that's a marathon and um and and you know it was just a fabulous night but i had literally just turned the corner in starting to recover from the diagnosis of an incurable disease that's right uh, and, and and i remember writing you a thank you letter to dj magazine just to thank you for everything you'd done in the previous 20 years that i had been inspired by made a career from and then obviously you know hit the floor and life the story of life remixed is essentially this is how much fun we had and then this is how bad it got for me personally and then a lot of strategies of how i fixed it and how anybody can you know remix their own life and that's the purpose of the book right but i remember writing you that letter um and i remember you seeing that letter as well and we connected on that as well so you know i'm most grateful for that of course well that's right i was i was i have to say i was very humbled by that letter and um at the same time inspired by your um sheer uh, determination to overcome your own personal health challenges it was uh, you know that letter was remarkable um and i shared that with other people um because it at that particular time you were not in a good way with your own personal health and mm. thankfully you pulled through it and came out the other side and here we are today talking about your book i've read the first couple of chapters hence writing the forward it's a great book Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate that. It's, uh, I, I hope that it's going to inspire people. I hope it's going to inspire a lot of people to, to just read it, understand, you know, all the things we did when we were kids. Um, and then, you know, all the things we can do right now to choose my, you know, my belief is having experienced personal crisis of health and bankruptcy myself is that in every crisis, there is an opportunity. Um, and we just have to look a bit harder sometimes to find it. Hmm. um there will be you know we're in the, the world's in a crisis now and I, I the idea of this book came about 10 12 years ago when i was in personal crisis but i've used a lot of strategies to bounce back to a point of you know personal health personal uh wealth and, and you know personal wellness and, and married and in a great place and so there's a lot of strategies that anybody could use and i hope it inspires a lot of people but let, yeah, this, go on, this, Sorry. just on that this is the thing um when you're in the depths of those dark periods um it is always um important as tough as it gets um to retain the faith that there will be an ending to um sure. particular circumstances and experiences in life um yeah of course there are days where you can't see the wood for the trees you can't see the light in in the dark tunnel but there is always light at the end of a tunnel in life experiences generally well uh, someone someone very intelligent once said to me even in the dip depths of darkness the sun still comes up the next day uh and in a period of a lifetime there will yeah. be some moments that will be up and down uh and and we are in that moment of, of sort of world crisis at the moment and i know many people have had enough and etc cetera, etc cetera. and but the point is is that we will come out of this uh you know we may have to be patient but we will come through this uh and there will be new changes and and some things will be will be better i mean you know it's just it's just how it is um so we have to keep the faith as you said and i i have a very strong feeling about faith over fear someone said to me once you cannot have faith and fear on the same subject at 
the same time. So let's have faith in the fact that things will bounce back and we yeah. will be able to get our careers and our businesses back on track, you know, yeah. if they've been knocked off track. Um, and that's the hardest thing, especially when you're in, in the thick of it. You know, some days you might be a bit like, you know, but, uh, you know, we have to just keep that energy up and, and that we're going we're gonna to bounce back. And from personal experience, well, I've been there, um, without going into too much mm. details, with an experience of over five years in the last decade. Mm. Um, <clears throat> um, when I had days like that, and I did have many of them, um, and some of them were pretty dark, um, I would just go, um, I'd go into the other room, and I would switch off from everything to switch my mind off and meditate or just completely go to sleep for a couple of hours to just remove myself from the situation when and it's a natural it's a natural reaction to these kind of experiences but i i i think you know also is the message is is to not give up on hope mm. and faith you know as tough as it gets do not let go of faith and that's very important that's great dan that's and great. i'm speaking from experience here i don't really want to go into no no and listen the, the gory details of it but um, all, the, all the gory details of my story are in my book so everyone's <laughs> gonna read that <laughs> well i'll save them for my book uh, right. That's, uh, and, the, and you've got dan you have a wonderful book i know you've written books before but you have another wonderful book to share over the next decade of, of your life and i know that uh, you know your, your your life experience is valuable to to many many people even just the short interview we're doing here i know that so you know um that leads me nicely into something that i know about you and some of your instagram followers will know about you but the wider world might not know something about you that i think you might want to share so something that you do on a regular basis that can change your state well, I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy endurance challenges, um, mm. walking for miles across rough terrain and mountains with um, 35 pound backpacks on to push myself to the limit. The last one I did was the um, Penny Fan Mountain in January of this year. Amazing. Tremendous experience. Um, it took me about close to six hours to get over that mountain, but I did it. I got from A to B um, and it was hard work, but I, I enjoy pushing myself to the limit uh, limits um, and um, push, you know, just going that, that without excuse the pun, that extra 10 miles. Um, I also recently, as a result of this um, crisis, I have started um, cold water therapy, which is um, oh. getting in to, freezing water fortunately i live near the sea so yeah. um i have yeah, know, end endless amounts of freezing cold water <laughs> <laughs> exactly um and it does wonders for the state of mind i haven't been in for the last week uh, because the sea has been too rough so um i do uh, look at whether it is safe to go in if it's not Good. safe then if in doubt stay out yeah. but i get i get in there and um it totally invigorates every cell in your body wow. um it it boosts the immune system mm. and it does wonderful things for one's general well-being and state of mind so in march um a friend of mine in australia and at the same time here um uh recommended have you um you live by the sea have you tried getting in the sea now i've you know oh. kind of been here a while occasionally i might go in but never ever in the winter would i go into the oh. sea. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this um this has developed since uh, the whole um crisis began and um i miss if a day goes by and i can't get into the sea or i'm out of town or whatever i miss that feeling of being in the water and i would like to get into competitive swimming that's nice. something that's on my mind and i think that's going to be the next step well done mate that's i mean that's that's some brave stuff i mean i i uh, i love being in the sea uh particularly when it's nice and warm in dubai or thailand <laughs> <laughs> I love being in the sea. I love the motion of the sea. The, the, the calmness of the sea actually really does, does beautiful things to me. It makes me feel very, very relaxed, which I love. Um, I'll be honest, I, I, didn't, I, I haven't got into cold sea. I'm not that brave. Uh, but uh, I have been trying something called cryotherapy, which I know you're well aware of. Um, yeah. And there's a place in Victoria, right by Victoria Station, called London Cryo. Um, so a big shout to all those guys. Uh, I've been trying that. And obviously, because part of my story is obviously I've had, you know, disease in my body, um, particularly at times of high stress and, and poor diet. Um, and uh, I've, uh, I, I, I've, 
gone to cryotherapy. Apparently, Ronaldo does it after every game. And if it's good enough for Ronaldo, it's good enough for me. Uh, Madonna, and, Ma and Madonna. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, you know, I mean, you know, she looks she looks great for, for you know, she's had a great career and, and she looks great for her age, doesn't she? So, so from my perspective, um, it's something that I've tried. I've done three minutes in the cryo chamber and I've actually come out feeling a lot better. Um, and it's something that I do on a regular basis every week every month I'm, I'm in there whenever i'm in london i pop in there uh and uh, yeah highly recommend it so thank you for sharing that Dan. yeah well done i mean you, you've done three sessions did you say but you're really feeling the health benefits i, I feel it i feel it i think it's a yeah. great thing to do um yeah. every week i pop into town and i'm uh, i'm due to book in some more sessions it is really good really good london cryo if you get a chance do check yeah, it. that's brilliant and also look up wim hof the wim hof method which is the basis of this also Good. Yes, absolutely right. Yeah. And I need to research that more. Um, but I am aware of the health benefits and also for the immune system as well. And, and my disease was an autoimmune uh, disease, you know, so um, so it's something that I'm very conscious of looking after my immune system. Absolutely. Well, all of us at this stage. So that's Wim Hof, the Iceman. If you uh, look up Wim Hof, the breathing should. techniques, the cold water therapy, uh, walking up mountains in a pair of shorts. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone needs to see me do oh, that. Now, but yeah. No, no, no. We're talking about freezing conditions. I'm sure. <laughs> With a pe just a pair of shorts on. <laughs> right. Okay. I'll be. I'll be down to you next week. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so look i mean you know we've already touched on, on on the best advice for um for for people looking to remix their own lives um i've got i've got sort of five things that i've been uh looking at and thinking about in the last few sort of weeks obviously because obviously you know this is not this is this is about my life remix and also you writing the ford and also kevin green my business mentor uh writing part of the ford as well which i'm really grateful to you both for doing um but it's not really about us, is it? It's about other people. It's about other people actually like learning some strategies to be able to bounce back in a strong way from a, any crisis, a personal crisis, or as we are right now, a world, you know, international crisis. So I've got five little top tips I'd like to share them with you, Dan, and then we can have a little chat about them and okay. just see, see what you think of them. So the first one um, is uh, to be your own security. And what I mean by that is uh, an opportunity for you to, you know, because we've all got the same amount of hours in the day. Uh, we've all got um, energy within us. That's how we grow. That's what we do. Um, and one of the things I learned, particularly in my own personal crisis of disease and bankruptcy, was um, to become my own security and, and to actually know that, I, you know, if you think that your job is your security, then, you know, literally perish the thought because it isn't. Your actual security, the only security, I believe, is, is within you. What do you think? Well, very much so. Um, I, I personal experience again um when this whole covid thing began in the lockdown um all work uh, i t t really had uh, great hopes for this well not hopes great feelings about this year start of a new decade <laughs> really exciting you know into the future this came along has knocked everybody sideways um whole full diary of work throughout this year just completely wiped out and i and yeah. i sank with that for a yeah. couple of months yeah. i have to you know, be very honest about it Thank like you. many people it affected my mental health in mm. a in a negative way and i and I, I i got very affected by it because i was you know so in my flow with the music mm. um last year and into this year i just come back from australia this mm. happened and then that's it everything is cancelled um there's no work that's my yeah. core income yeah. and like for a lot of people that's your core income income has gone now what yeah and yeah it uh took all of us by surprise and um everybody has been affected it by this in a different way um particularly with mental health but yeah. I, I i did go to a bit of a a downbeat place i i couldn't i just couldn't see the the light i thought what's you know what's happening but um as time has gone on and and working on health and what have you um and looking at other things this point of security is so important yeah um when you have one core stream of income and that's gone and removed or whether you lose your job or whether it's in relation to this crisis then you've got to look outside of the box and start working on some other things of how yeah. one can generate an income yeah, that's right that's absolutely right and yeah. that is about i think you know it's important to learn new skills yeah. um 
um, um, educate yourself in, di in, in different lines of business maybe or mm. associated with the core businesses that we're in um, and to generate uh, other streams of income it's really really important and that, 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 sorry Dan sorry I was yeah. gonna say that leads me into my second point which is multiple sources of income yeah it's right. vital it's absolutely yeah. vital I mean if I could go back to my 20 year old self yeah uh, and say to my 20 year old self right you want to be a DJ, okay, and you want to get out there and you want to make music and you want to do something in the creative world. The quickest and best way for you to do that is to set up a load of assets that pay you monthly uh, or annually. They pay you money back into your bank account so you can then go out and be creative without any of the worry, any of the doubt, any of the anxiety, any of the relying on everything else to go, you know, in the world and market forces and all that. If you just set up some assets, you'll be able to just cruise through life and enjoy it and actually do something creative. I would talk to my 20 year old self and I would say that to him. Uh, and now, clearly, uh, I didn't have that guidance and I. And I wasn't able to guide myself that way. And I, I came off the rails of big style in my 30s um, with both of those, those personal crises. But what I've learned since, and this is the interesting thing for me yeah. and uh, to share with you, is that, that uh, 12 years ago, I was bankrupt and living in my mum's spare room. I was 38 years of age, just going 20 years as international DJ with a top 10 hit and all this kind of stuff. It counted for nothing. Uh, and I was living, you know, just a, a bare life, you know. Um, even signing on for six months myself and the point was I just I couldn't believe this has happened but all I've done since for the last 12 years is set up set myself up learn new skills still love music still DJ still make some music um, but create multiple sources of income with assets with multiple companies with properties with all kinds of things that have actually allowed me now to, you know, with the greatest respect and as you well know yourself because we've spoken quite a lot through this crisis is is to create businesses and a life that i i'm, I'm just n cruising through this and, and navigating my way to the, the you know into the next time where the light comes back and and we can we can get back to some sort of like you know quote normality but those multiple sources of income are vital and i know that's something that you're passionate about and something that you're creating yourself right now so you know well the thing is you've got to get started yeah you know it's where do you start it's yeah. thinking about what you're going to do um but it, i i think you know having a certification or skill mm -hmm. that helps mm -hmm. um uh, by any means necessary you know whatever job you've got to do for a while or whatever it may be right. but, um you have to have a, a roadmap and a, and a vision for where you want to go and it's very very important because right now a lot of people have been left with nothing mm -hmm. um and it's a very very difficult place to be but um it's about, as I said, it's about learning something else. Well, I've, got, I've, got, I've got something for you there that I just wrote down, which is tough times don't last, but tough people do. Yeah, there you go. You know? Yeah, and we're, and we're not being paid by some um, <laughs> Whitehall Westminster agency here with us. This is about, oh, life, no. experience. <laughs> yeah. it's about life experience. That's right. And, and your book, Life Remix, sharing that experience. Um, and sometimes you've got to start from the ground up again. Yeah, and that's okay. And it's, it, and it, it, it's blooming tough. I, it's I had a choice. I had, I had a choice when I was in the depths of my own personal crisis was to jump off a bridge or go, oh, come on, come on. You're better than this, man. Let's step up. Let's get on with it, you know? And that was, that was good. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy and grateful that I did that, you know? Um, but that kind of leads me on to my next point, which is the third point, which is to find your purpose. Now, I found my own purpose in life by accident in many ways uh, when I gave a talk to some students and I got the same feeling that I did from giving the talk to the students as I did when I DJed and I realized that part of my purpose was to bring joy to other people um any any thoughts on that because clearly you've done the same <laughs> <laughs> exactly that is my purpose to bring joy to other people and I've got the badge and the awards for that yes, and um, I will continue to do that th throughout my life yes. um Music is my core driver, my core competence, and um, um, I will continue uh, to have a role in music. For, of course, you I'd like to say for the rest of my days. Yeah, you but will. It's, it, it's about your purpose. That has been music. Has, is my purpose, but there are other things around music as well that are also becoming a purpose. When um, I realised, when I realised that my purpose was to bring joy to people, I then realised that actually. I could do that a hundred different ways. Yes. 
Very much so. And it's, it's, as I just said, it's looking outside of the box and where else you can actually place that yes. position yeah. and that, uh, and those skills and transfer yeah. those skills into this, that, and the other and thinking, well, actually that kind of resonates with that, but it's a little bit different, but it's still the same principles. Exactly right. And that's the mindset. Yes, that's right. And that's changing that mindset to realize, you know, I, I thought, you know, for 20 years, I thought, I'm a DJ, I'm a DJ, I'm a DJ, I'm a DJ. And now I was a DJ and I, and that's what I did. But actually, you know, I'm just Mark. I'm just Mark and I'm just an energy and I just put that energy out. And if I get two hours on a Saturday night to play music to people, to bring joy to them, that's brilliant. But if I get 10 hours a day to coach, to develop, to help, to train, uh, you know, to work, to actually like build companies, to do everything else. You know, we've all got that same 24-7, you know, uh, in, in, a, in, in a week. And it's about how we use our energy. And once I'd understood my purpose was to bring joy, I could do that to, to 100 different ways, like I say. And so, so that's important, I think, is finding your purpose is, is, a, is a beauty. Um, the fourth one is put your, put your health at the forefront. Um, I think without your health, you've got nothing. You know, and I think using your, uh, you know, cold water therapy and stuff like that has obviously been really good for your own uh, physical and mental health during this time. Very much so. Yeah, brilliant. Mate. Di diet is very important. As yes, well. it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, choosing the right foods, the healthy foods to put in. You know, don't the biggest one for me. I've lost ten kilograms in the last three months through just cutting out sugar. Oh, that's brilliant. Well yeah. done. So I'm really pleased with that, and I'm going to keep going because. Uh, yeah, that sugar, sugar is just, it's like cocaine, mate. It's, 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 it's proper addictive stuff, you know. I'm addicted to dark chocolate, but I, it's one vice. I, dark chocolate is, I find it very hard to. Dark chocolate, chocolate. Is, dark chocolate is not, not the, not the worst. And, you know, well, I, 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 steer towards um it's not kit kats or anything like that no. but i steer towards dark chocolate at 85 90 percent mate uh, 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 95 percent um cocoa yeah uh, and that is um less sugar so exactly it's still chocolate There's that's still your treat that's your treat dan you're allowed a treat don't forget you're allowed a treat <laughs> and the last one. A treat every day mark <laughs> 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 and the last one, the last one I've got down here is like the last point that, that I've used that I think could, can help people through a crisis is um, calm down and speed up. What do you think about that? I like that statement, Mark. I think, you know, in any crisis, um, try and remain as calm as you can. Mm. Um, you know, uh, that is something that one has to have at the forefront of their thoughts mm. sometimes it may be difficult to not remain calm in a, in a time of crisis but just step back and take a deep breath sometimes and um, think before you know kind of uh, getting into into too much of a panic yeah um so yes that statement that you've just made there i um presume that's in your book it's one yeah. of your yeah. statements is it it is well calm down speed up is actually inspired by bob protzer to be fair okay um and uh but but it's very very true what i've found is is the calmer that i've become in life the more effective i am so my thoughts are calm so my feelings are calm so my actions are calm and all of a sudden i'm managing 10 companies and running 10 businesses and four property companies and huge property deals and writing a book and putting things out it's not an, it's not an accident it's not an accident. You know, I, I learned when I was younger, I learned to be, I, I was, I was successful to a point in music as you, as you know, um, but I was never to your level. I was never to fat boy slims level. I was never to, you know, but I, I was successful to a point in music, but that's because I was always sort of up, down, up, down, up, down, little bit of improvement and down a little bit of improvement. Down. And I was, I could never work out why. And it was largely down to the fact that I had a lot of thoughts and feelings and doubts and worries, anxieties, and, and I allowed them to fester. Um, and and they, they took me down eventually into incurable disease and bankruptcy. And the calmer I've become in the last 12 years, I'm now successful. And it, there's, there's a massive correlation between calming down and speeding up and feeling good about your life. Mm. Well, uh, when soldiers go into battle, they're taught to stay calm, to remain calm under wow. he heavy fire whatever that may be under very wow. challenging circumstances it's remaining calm and uh, in the line of fire and society <laughs> at, at as a whole at the moment is under fire with this crisis yeah. yes yeah yeah i mean remaining calm when someone's pointing a gun at you then i mean god <laughs> you know but that, i mean that's true though i mean you know obviously uh, and something else that people don't know about you i mean you served in the paras didn't you when you were when you were a kid um and you learned a lot of skills there 
I served in the territorial army. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, fair play to you, Dan. You know, that was uh, that's a good thing. I mean, I've met a lot of military guys, and they're they're the proper men. You know, they're the salt of the earth. They support each other. They look after each other. They do great things for each other. Um, and and I love that. I love that. So calming down, and and yes, calming down in a crisis and being in a position where. Um, you know, you, you kind of lose control of your thinking. I mean, you see a lot of it on social media, people just like, you know, and just ranting and, and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't help. It doesn't serve you. Well, this is the thing I was going to just uh, add to that is time management um, yep. that we haven't uh, touched on. Mm. Time is our most precious commodity. Yeah. You cannot get time back. It is so important to be mindful of that. And I think over the course of a lifetime uh, with life experiences, maybe that could be a death of a friend, a partner, a family member. That really, I have found from my own experience, really bring to the forefront how precious time is yeah. and wasted time yeah. so activities that do not serve you um i have limited my time on social media um mm. this year um it's so easy to get distracted and um t and, and hours are consumed mm. and what have you got back from that yeah you haven't got anything back from it no. so i have got put a set of um um uh measures in place to mm. limit my time on there so i have a time yeah. limit after an hour i'm timed out and yeah. i'm not able to get back in there it may sound ridiculous no no it's fine but to manage my own time better and not get distracted for mm. more than a, a given amount of time that's my own application to it this year and it served me much better because i'm reading more books yes. i'm applying more time elsewhere that's yeah. spent more productively yes. which is yielding me something back in return for the time I, I am investing into other parts of one's life other 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 fields and other education Brilliant. whether it be reading or yeah. studying or writing all of these things are nourishing me or whether it would be watching interviews from other successful people um i limit my time i do not own a television mm-hmm I haven't for many years. Nothing wrong with television. It's just my choice. Yeah. So the only day that I will watch a film or uh, documentaries or um, something on uh, Netflix or wh whichever channel uh, is Sunday. Sunday yeah. is my kind of, well, I don't like to call it a treat. It's just a day where uh, of relaxation yeah. where then I can say, well, okay, I'll spend three, four hours, five hours maybe watching a series or something like that. But I will not watch television during the week. It's also recharging. You know, that Sunday rest is, is, is a bit of recharging for all of us yeah. uh, for us to be able to go again. And, and, you know, the rest of 2021, there could be some more challenges ahead. There could be more, you know, local lockdowns and national lockdowns. Who knows? But the point is, is that, you know, we, we have to stay positive. Uh, we have to manage ourselves well. And, and one of the things I learned was to go on a negativity fast. So, you know, don't watch the news. I mean, you know, if you watch the news for more than about five minutes at the moment, it's just in it's just relentless negativity you know we're obsessed with disease and death and it's like you know we need to move past this as a as a humanity and we will we will um you know there's a great thing in think and grow rich by napoleon hill where he says every seven to ten years there will be a crisis in humanity and if you think about 2008 9 there was there's not enough money in the world so we're all scared of poverty and then you know 2000 or 2020 here we are we're scared of you know disease and death and stuff you know and it just there will be another one in seven to ten years there will be another crisis and, and our mission as humanity and, and every one of us is to not allow the next crisis to affect us and, and to improve continually improve as, as as individuals um and and you know i'm looking forward to you and i working together closely over the next 10 20 however many years then um you know because i believe that there's so much synergy between us from life remix from all the work that you're doing uh, I think we can do some, you know, amazing work together um, because, you know, the power of the mastermind and people thinking together and, and, and what you're good at, I'm not good at, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of stuff, you know, working, cooperating as a team and doing something really effective in the world will be, will be, you know, the next, my next decade, certainly. Yeah. Exciting times ahead. It's uh, really important to have transferable skills. Yes, it is Dan. Absolutely right. Um, Absolutely. And nurturing your creativity, whatever um, industry you're in, particularly the creative industries, nurturing that creativity while we're in this position at the moment, yeah. there's great music that's being released. Um, everyone's really uh, geared up to get back out doing what they love. But in the meantime, you know, it's kind of 
looking at new things, um, nurturing what you're doing and, um, and learning, you know, learning new things. I mean, I would say never lose that creativity, never lose that because that's so vital. So many people do a job they hate, you know, yeah. they're not happy, uh, but, but because they haven't got a creative outlet, they haven't got something that can give them that kind of creativity. But what I had to learn was balance. Yeah. There's balance well, between balance between like high creativity and then also you know lots of other ways that you can earn really good money doing other things as well so. and you're a shining example of that mark and that's what i admire about you i think you're very very inspirational to a lot of people uh, you coach a lot a lot of uh, individuals and businesses um and that is a great skill that you you have mark Thank you. um and personal development self-development is very very important I mean, um, how can you dis be dismissive of personal development? <laughs> it, it's it's your development, our development. Mm -hmm. So, as I just said, why waste time elsewhere when you can be developing yourself into becoming a much more skilled, knowledgeable, and better person in life? And 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 the way to do that, as I've learned, is is repetition is mastery. The more you repeat something, the more you do it. The more I the more I do positive thinking, the more I do positive feeling and the more I do positive actions. And all I do now is I wake up in the morning with purpose, which is joy, knowledge, inspire, create. And then I get out there and I actually add value to as many people's lives as I possibly can uh, throughout the day. And then by the end of the day, I'm a bit tired. I do lay down on the sofa and watch a, watch a couple of hours with Emma on the telly. Uh, and then that's it. I'm out and that's I'm done for the day. But the point is, is that adding that value, giving that service and doing something positive with your life is is part of that personal development that personal personal journey so you know listen dan I, I really appreciate you joining me today uh it's been it's been wonderful to see you uh and and again thank you so much for writing uh your part of the forward to the book uh i'm looking forward to it coming out in february 2021 uh you've got people can see all of the uh the websites and all the other stuff they want to connect with us but um thank you again danny thanks for joining us um i really really appreciate it mate my pleasure, Mark, and I wish you the best of success with the book. You're a gentleman. Thank you, mate.